started tonight, um, it's just funny how I think the last time I ministered, I had some crazy, bizarre things happen the day of. And so I have to tell you, it's funny. It has nothing to do with my message, okay, but it's just funny. Okay, do you want to laugh a little bit? So, no? Okay, I won't say it. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. So I'm getting ready to leave my house, and our dog just had puppies, so she's been staying in the house, and she is not an inside dog. She has never been potty trained, and she's, I think she's 10, 11 years old, maybe, and uh, she doesn't really, she hasn't really got the concept. Yeah, I mean, I think she kind of does. She knows she's supposed to go outside. So I'm walking down the stairs, and I'm walking through the house, and all of a sudden I'm like smelling this awful poop smell. And I looked down, and I had stepped through some poop, okay, in these shoes that I still decided to wear, okay? So if you start smelling, somebody texted me and said, good luck with your poo shoes tonight. And I was like, you know what? The stank is following me, I think. Maybe it's just in my head. So if you start to smell a little poop stank, just keep smelling it because eventually you'll get used to it, okay? Okay, so then, so there's the poop stank. <laughs> oh, I hope my dad doesn't get upset with me for talking about poop. Um, so then I have, I'm having to put on this, this thing, and usually I use the, the lapel. And so I'm trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to get this under my hair? So I throw my head over, and then I get lipstick all over my white shirt. So I'm like, I got poop on my shoes. I got my white shirt has lipstick all over it. But you know what? It, like we, we've talked about before, and Miss Donna said, you know, and Pastor said, you just got to laugh sometimes. Because you can't let it. I could have gotten freaked out. Oh, my gosh, now I have, I have poop on my shoes. I needed, which I didn't want to change. That's why I still wore my shoes. <laughs> but... My shirt has lipstick on it, but you know what? It's like, you know what? You just got to laugh. Because what, what good is it going to be to get all bent out of shape about it? So anyways, just my, my funny evening. Well, just some quick announcements before I get started. Miss Donna wanted me to mention that we have a new Bible study starting a week from yesterday, February 3rd. It's Breathe by Priscilla Schreier. It's going to be facilitated by Miss Sherry Bigham right over there. It's going to be on Tuesday nights at 6.30, so make sure you sign up. I believe the book is $15. It's going to be a really good study. We also have some other women's events coming up. This Friday is Mom's Night Out at Miss Sarah Clay's house, a movie night. Get more information out there. And then our Pretty in Pink, which all it says in the bulletin is Pretty in Pink, February 26th. This is actually a jewelry exchange. If you've been around here for a while and been to one of these, you might know what it is. If not, we'll talk about it a little bit more, but make sure you have that on your calendars. All right, are you ready to get into the word tonight? You know, any time that my dad has asked me to preach, it's like, it's a question, but it's not really, a, it's an opportunity, really. I, I could say, oh my gosh, I'm so busy, but I would never pass up an opportunity to push myself to do something like this. And every time I do it, I always think, okay, I could talk about this. This is what I'm reading on. And I had an idea. I had a topic. And I told both my parents about it. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's good. Well, the next day, they're like, so, you know, are you still doing good on that topic? I was like, no, I think I'm changing it. Because for me, I don't ever want to get up here and encourage you or teach you in something that either I haven't gone through personally myself or I'm not currently going through at the moment. Because that's just what's big in me. So tonight, um, what we're going to talk about is I've got two points, two questions for you. And it's, I, I was just telling Miss Denise, I don't like titles. I don't like making titles. But um, what we're going to be talking about tonight is two questions to ask yourself if you're not receiving what you've believed in God, been believing God for or what you've been praying for if you haven't seen it yet. So let's open up. We're going to start in Genesis 12, if you want to go with me there. I love that Pastor John says sometimes it's good to read it because we're going to be talking about Abraham tonight. And I know a lot of people know all about Abraham. Some of you may not. Um, but it'll be really great to read it through. Um, we're going to be reading a lot tonight too. I didn't have the scriptures up there because it was just going to be a lot. So you can read along or you can listen. I'm going to be reading uh, mainly from the Message Bible. But I was thinking sometimes that we feel like God is maybe moving in slow motion Maybe we're, we're wondering, Pastor Bracken says, God's missed a lot of opportunities to be early, but he's never late. And I think right now we live in such a fast-paced society where we want it all and we want it now. You know, we want to pray for something, we want to believe God for something, and if we don't get it in a day, a month, a year, 
we start to throw our hands in the air like, hello, you know, are you hearing me? And I think that's our society and that's our generation. We you know, have our phones and if someone doesn't answer our text message in 30 minutes, we wonder what's going on. Where are they? Are they ignoring me? They didn't answer my phone call. They didn't call me back. And I think it's just our generation and our society, we want it right now. So let's go to Genesis 12. I'm going to start just in verse 1. So God told Abraham, leave your country, your family, your father's home for a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and bless you. I'll make you famous. You'll be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you. Those who curse you, I'll curse. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham left just as God said. Lot went with him. Abraham right here, he was 75 years old when he left Tehran. I'm going to skip down a little bit to verse 7. God appeared to Abraham and said, I will give this land to your children. So this is God's first promise that Abraham was going to have children. Abraham built an altar at the place, an altar at the place of God appeared to him and he sacrificed. Okay, now let's go to Genesis 15. In verse 1, it says, After all these things, the word of God came to Abraham in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abraham. I'm your shield. Your reward will be grand. Abraham said, God, Master, what use are all your gifts as long as I'm childless? And Eliezer of Damascus is going to inherit everything. Abraham continued, See, you've given me no children, and now a mere house servant is going to get it all. At this time... Let me see here if I want to read a little bit more. No, I don't. All right, we're going to go to six. So, promised again for the second time. You're going to have children, okay, Abraham? Or Abram, he's not Abraham yet, but I'm just going to call him Abraham, okay? Because that's his better name. So, he's telling him again, hey, I'm going to give you children, okay? Trust me. So, we come to verse 16. Now, in verse 16, it's been 10 years. Abraham's 85 right now, okay? So, 10 years. Not a month, not a year. It's been 10 years and since God promised Abraham that he was going to have children. Still no children, okay? Sometimes when we don't see our harvest, we don't see what we're believing God for, we maybe try to make God's plan happen and do our own thing. And this is what happens in Genesis 16. So Sarah, Abraham's wife, had not yet produced a child. She had an Egyptian maid named Hagar. Sarah said to Abraham, God has not seen fit for me to have a child. Sleep with my maid. Maybe I can get a family from her. And Abraham agreed to do what Sarah said. So, as we know the story, Hagar ended up getting pregnant by Abraham. Now, like I said, sometimes we decide to take matters into our own hands. And Ishmael was born, okay? And Abraham was 86 years old. Sometimes we have these Ishmaels in our life. I think I see a lot of it in marriages. You know, people think, I've been there. You know, my man hasn't come along yet. I'm ready. So this one seems okay. Let's do this. Or I'm going to make this happen because I haven't seen it yet. And then guess what happens? It's not God's plan. It's not the best for what God has for you. And so I think we have to be careful sometimes and not force God's plan because we don't know what God's plan is. And when we force it, when we end up having an Ishmael situation, things go like this. You know, I told um, Pastor Tim Brown was here a few weeks ago, and we were standing in the kitchen, and he's like, so have you, have you found him yet? Have you found your man yet? And I was like, no. But I told him, I said, I'm okay. I would rather be single than out of the will of God. Yes, I would love to be married. I would love to find him. I would love... I don't even care if I get married. I just would like to find him and know, know who he is. But you know what? I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to get out of the will of God just because that's what I want. I was uh, actually laying in my bed a couple nights ago, and this is what made me decide to speak on this topic right here. And I know faith is such a, a spoken about topic around here. My dad is probably, I mean, Abraham was the father of faith, but I feel like I got a father of faith in my house. He does not waver. He does not worry at all, but um, so I'm, I was laying in my bed, and I was on Facebook, and one of my really good friends just got married, and they honeymooned in Bora Bora, and they posted every picture that they probably took of Bora Bora, 
And, you know, all my friends are getting, have gotten married. They're starting to have children, even people that were younger than me in school. And it's so easy to get discouraged, and it's so easy to get frustrated when I'm seeing all this. And I'm like, God, I'm, I'm in your will. I'm doing what I feel like I'm supposed to be doing. I'm serving you. But all these people are doing what I long for, and they have what I want. And I started feeling myself get discouraged. And I was like, you know what? This is so dumb. I put my phone away, and out loud, I'm telling you, I'm laying in my bed, out loud, I said, you know what? I'm not going to get discouraged. I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to get down. I'm not going to throw a pity party. I said, God, you're all that I need. You're it. I don't need a man. I don't need a man to make me happy, to make me feel secure, to make me feel like I can do God's plan, your plan for my life. I don't need that. You're my security. You're where I find my joy, my peace, my everything that I need. And you know what? It was like this. And all those feelings went away. I was like, I should do this more often. You know, because sometimes we say it up here, we think, okay, we're talking to God in our head. Like, okay, you know, saying all those things. But it's different when you speak them out of your mouth out loud. Sometimes you, I mean, I I don't know about you guys, and maybe it's just my personality, but sometimes I feel really goofy praying out loud and talking to God out loud. I like to do it up here sometimes. I'm not telling you that you should do that. But for me, it, it, it's, I don't know, I just, but I was like, you know what, I don't even care. I don't care if my brother hears me in the next room and thinks I'm a weirdo, okay? But I did it, and it was, it, y'all, it was, it, was, it was so refreshing because all those feelings went away. You know, sometimes that's what we have to do. We have to say, okay, God, it's been a while, but I'm still going to trust you, okay? And say it out loud. Because then, then you really are, are you're not going to say something out loud that you don't mean. All right, let's go to Genesis 17. So in 17 now, Abraham is 99 years old. He's getting old. All right, we're going to go to verse 15. So this is right after God told Abraham he was changing his name to Abraham. And he's telling Abraham, Sarah, your wife, don't call her Sarai anymore. Call her Sarah. I'll bless her. Yes, I'll give her. I'll give you a son by her. Oh, how I will bless her. Nations will come from, nations will come from her. Kings of nations will come from her. So Abraham fell flat on his face, and then he laughed, thinking, Can a hundred-year-old man father a son? And can Sarah, at 90 years, have a baby? I love this because my Bible, the next, it says, recovering, Abraham said to God. So he had to recover from whatever the heck he just did, which he fell on his face and was like, Lord, really? A hundred years old? He was probably, he says he was laughing. And so he re, he's recovering. Abraham said to God, oh, he, okay. So he talks about Ishmael. Um... Then he talks about Ishmael, he'll establish his covenant with him and his descendants, a covenant that lasts forever. So, a year later, finally, that's when Isaac is born. Y'all, 25 years he waited and believed what God said was, what God said was actually going to happen. 25 years, can you believe? That's me. That's my, that's my age right now, 25 years. I mean, can you imagine, and we don't, we don't see it in five years, ten years. I remember being 20 years old thinking, I'm ready to get married. Now it's been five years. I'm like, all right, God, I'm ready to get married. You know, and we, it, it's just crazy, 25 years. But Abraham never stopped believing God, never once. Yeah, he had the Ishmael, but he never stopped believing that God was going to give him a child, that God was going to give him children. And I'm going to show you exactly where it says that. We're going to go to Romans 4, 13. There's so much in this chapter that I absolutely love that talks about Abraham and everything that this story had to do with Abraham, apart from him having a son, but his faith. Let's see, let's read. I want to start in, probably it's somewhere around 18. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway deciding to live not on the basis of what he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. So he was made a father of the multitudes of people. God himself said to him, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. 
Abraham didn't focus on his own impotence and say, it's hopeless, which I think a lot of us do sometimes. You know what? It's hopeless. Why, why am I doing this? Why am I still believing? Why don't I just decide that I'm going to be single for the rest of my life? Maybe that'll be better. But no, he didn't. He didn't say, it's hopeless. This 100-year-old body can never father a child. Nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. He didn't tiptoe around God's promise, asking cautiously skeptical questions. He plunged, I love that, he plunged into the promise and came up strong, ready for God, sure that God would make good on what he said. And that's why it is said that Abraham was declared fit before God by trusting God to set him right. And right here it says that it's not just Abraham, it's us. The same thing gets said about us when we embrace and believe the one who brought Jesus to life when the conditions were equally hopeless. You know, the Bible says that without faith it's impossible to please God. The one thing, we cannot please God without it. I want to be pleasing to God. Don't you? Write this down. We can always trust the person of God, even when we can't grasp the plan of God. We can always trust the person of God, even when we can't grasp the plan of God. You know, we're never going to be able to understand God's timing. We're never going to be able to understand why things happen the way that they do. But we can always trust in the person and who God is that he loves us, that he's going to take care of us, that he knows the desires that we have. If we're delighting ourselves in him, just like the Bible says, he's going to give us those desires. We can trust that what the word says about him is true, even when we don't understand the plan. So I'm going to say that one more time for those of you still trying to write that down. We can always trust the person of God even when we can't grasp the plan of God. You know, it's just like Christmas time. Just because you didn't get what you asked for, maybe as a child, doesn't mean that your mom and dad don't love you. They just maybe had a different plan. And maybe you're still going to get it, but maybe just not at that time. Lori and I were talking in the gym one day. For those that have been around for a little while, we were in contract with Stripes on our corner property, gosh, a year year ago. I don't know. It's been a little while. But they backed out. You know, that fell through. And now they've come back a year later. Land has gone up. Prices have gone up. And it's, it's easy back then to say, well, gosh, you know, we really were believing for this. We really thought that this was it. But God has a plan in everything because now when this thing happens, we're going to get more money than we would have got a year ago. So you can't say why and what for and because you don't know something better is right around the corner. That's why you can't. Faith doesn't say why. It says, okay, what? What do I do next? What am I supposed to do with this? What, God, what do you want me to do? Not why. Why, what, and action. What do you want me to do? I have a video clip for my next point. So if we can turn the lights down and look at the screen. Kneel down right there. What? Kneel down right there. Come on. Okay. Put your ear around the ice. Come on, listen. You hear them? The mother is speaking to the little one. Her calls are calm, gentle, oh, soothing. Do you hear her? Mm-hmm. What do you think she's trying to tell her baby? Um, what you said? Kneel down right there. What? Kneel down right there, come on. Okay. Put your ear around the ice. We don't want to watch that again, thanks though. So how many of you, I remember when I was a little girl, um, and and if you're a parent, you've probably said this, but you're talking to your children, hey, are you listening to me? Hey, are you listening? There's times where we can be hearing and not listening. I've been so, um, just, I've had a lot going on lately and so busy that before my dad left a couple days ago, he was talking to me, and I think I was writing, or I could have been on my phone or something, and I realized when he was done, 
I thought, I just heard him talking to me, but I have no idea what the heck he just said. And sometimes with God, we, my second point, my, my second question is, if you're not seeing what you're believing for, are you listening to the voice of God and not just hearing the voice of God? Like in the video, that little boy had an opportunity to listen to those whales and, and, and experience something beautiful, but his ears were being filled with something different that blocked what he could have heard down below and maybe not had another opportunity to. So I think it's important for us to make sure that something else isn't filling our ears when the Lord's trying to speak to us, or if he does speak to us, that we don't let things come in afterwards and take us away from that, that um, whatever it was that God was telling us to do. I talked about it a little bit on Sunday with the daycare. Back in September, my mom and I and Miss Denise and Miss Kathy from Post, we went to a women's conference in, in Tulsa up at Rama. And I had just taken the daycare back over as the director. I always oversaw it, gave up the director, or I hired a new director a year before that, and she had just left. So I just recently taken over, and we decided to go on this trip. And the whole first couple days, I was on my phone. I was putting out fires. I was dealing with this upset person and that upset person, and it, it just was starting to snowball. And we sat there, and my mom said, well, what do you want to do? So at this whole conference, I was like, Lord, if I don't get anything but an answer, that's, that's all I care about. So I really started just talking to God and seeking him and say, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? Do I need to try to find a new director? Do we need to just close it down? Is it time? And so I was just really, that was my main, fo- I know that, you know, there were, the ministers were ministering on s- some totally different things, but in, in the worship time and in just my, my own little bubble time, I was like, talk to me, God, please talk to me. Like, I need you. I need, I need your wisdom and I need your guidance. And I believe that week and I got my answer. And my answer was that it was time. And it was for the last five, gosh, yeah, five years, five and a half years that was kind of my baby. I, my mom was ready to close it a few years before that, and I was like, no, 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 let me take it. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. It was such a ministry, too, at, at times for these families, and, but I felt like I got my answer. Well, I got back, and I started hearing the other listening to the other voices that were up here because I'll tell you, that daycare paid 100% of my salary here. It allowed me to be able to be here at the church. So of course, thinking, we close it down, I gotta, we got to figure out what I'm going to do if I'm going to still stay on at the church, if I'm going to, because I personal train at the gym, am I going to personal train full time? And I started, I started listening to those. And October rolls around, the daycare is still there. And this snowball, y'all, went from about this big to about this big. And we started, it was, I mean, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but we started having a lot of false accusations against us, investigations being opened by the state. It was an attack, really, is what it was. It was an attack from the devil spiritually to, I don't know, wear me down, wear my mom down, Lord. I mean, it was, a, it was kind of a group thing. We, we all felt it in there. So October comes, and then November comes. And I knew, my mom knew, I think we all knew, but, no, but we weren't making, we weren't doing it. And so finally in December, it was about the second week of December, we had talked about, okay, if we were to close it, when we would, what we would do, we'd write a letter and tell the families. And that's what I was thinking too, okay, I have these families, they're going to be really upset, they're going to come upset to me, I'm going to have to deal with all this confrontation. So, so I start getting in fear about what was going to happen about my finances. God's always taking care of me, so I was silly to think that I was going to have a problem with that. So the second week of December, I received a phone call from another upset mother. Well, she wasn't upset. She just wanted to enlighten me on a few things that she saw that was going on that I wasn't aware of. And finally, I got off the phone, and it was kind of like, okay, okay, God, got it. So I walked over to my mom's office. I said, Mom, I stepped in her office, and I said, 
write the letter. And I turned around and I walked right back out. And we made the decision to go ahead and close it down. And when that was done, I mean, I know a lot of you probably have been in situations like this where you finally listen to God and you do what God's telling you to do. And it's like a huge weight has been lifted. And I was like, gosh, I could have been experienced this weightlessness for the last four months, but I didn't. I didn't act on what God was telling me to do. And because of that, my life was probably a lot harder for a few months than it could have been. So it's so important that we don't let other voices, we don't let things cloud that space in between God and us and what God's telling us to do. Oh, I'm missing some of my notes. Okay. Let's go. Um, we're going to finish. I'm going to close in. Oh, I'm going from memory now. Psalm 81, I think. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if I'm right. I hope I'm right. Yeah. Talking about listening to God. I believe he's, yes, yes. Psalm 81, verse 11. He's talking to Israel. But my people didn't listen. And here's where the consequence is coming. My people didn't listen. Israel paid no attention. So I let go of the reins and I told them, run. Do it your own way. Oh, dear people, will you listen to me now? Israel, will you, will you follow my map? I'll make short work of your enemies. Give your foes the back of my hand. I'll send the God-haters cringing like dogs, never to be heard from again. You'll feast on my fresh-baked bread spread with butter and rock-pure honey. I love that he said, because Israel didn't listen, they didn't pay attention, he let go of the reins and he said, okay, you better run. I'm letting the dogs come after you. So it's so important that we listen. And, we, and, we, and God is not, you know, I, I don't, God has never, I've never had an experience where I've heard an audible voice. Some people do. I personally haven't, but I know on the inside. And, and for me, hearing the voice of God is, okay, this is what I'm thinking God's telling me, and you move in that direction, and then there's either peace or there's not peace. If there's peace, it's God. If there's not, it's not. It's you. It's you in your head. But it's so important that we listen, and we really are seeking after God, and we're talking to God. God, show me your voice. Show me your way. Show me your path. God's not going to show us the whole entire path. He's going to show us, give us enough light to make the next step and have the faith for the next step. And then the light's going to come on on the next step and the next step. My last story for you. I told this story the very first time I ever preached it. It's probably one of my favorites because it just really... Um, I guess, exemplifies the, the, the way that God has his way of doing things and his plan and us trying to do our own. Like I said earlier, my dad, he's one of the most neat and precise and relaxed and laid back people, I, probably person that I've ever met in my life. His food, y'all, it doesn't matter if he makes a sandwich. It doesn't matter if he makes... What something? Um, a burger, spaghetti. His food looks better than everyone else's. Always. Because he takes his time and he gets his noodles and he puts his sauce and he puts his cheese and it's like, I want your food. My mom's always going over to his food. She's like, I want that food. I don't want that food that I made. But me and my mom are so similar in the fact of we are fast, and we're in a hurry, and we're constantly on the go, on the go, on the go. If we stand there, our legs are moving. We're, we're going up here, and then we're going over here. And so when, when I was little, Mom, most of the time, would make our lunches. And PBJ, of course, was the go-to lunch. We, you know, we, at this time, we didn't really have a lot of, of um, choices, I guess, in our life, and, and I remember saying, Mom, can Dad please make my peanut butter and jelly sandwich today? Because if I made it, or my mom made it, 
You, we always knew, if you opened up the lunchbox, if Dad made it, there was no peanut butter and jelly on the outside of that sandwich. It was all inside there, perfectly put in the bag, in the lunchbox. Now, if Mom made it or if I made it, you cannot get your hand in there and come out safe. You could not. And it would be sticky for days, like playing operation, trying to go in there and not get any peanut butter and jelly on your hands because it was all in the bag. Because it was like, you know, done. Put in the bag. And so sometimes it's like, okay, God, you, I will let you. <laughs> Please make my sandwich. Make it however you want to make it. Take as much time as you want to. Because if I make it, it's probably going to be a mess. And sometimes we have to just trust God that it may take a little bit more time. And he's going to do it the way he wants to do it. But it's always going to come out better than we could have done it. We have to trust God in our lives and in the things that we're believing God for. And just because we haven't seen it, number one, are we still believing through the dry season like Abraham and Sarah for 25 years for their, in their dry season? Are we still believing? Are we still pressing? Are we still dropping our shoulders and digging in and pressing on forward? And then also, are we not just hearing, but are we listening? And God's going to give us those desires. You know, I was talking to a, um, a good friend a few days ago, and she's in the same boat I am. She's older than I am. But in talking with her, you know, we talked about how we, we just, you can't go there and say, why, God, why? You just can't. You can't let yourself go there and, and say, well, well, what about me? They have it. I don't. What about me? Do you not care about me? You know, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. You just can't even go there. That's not faith. That's doubt. That's believing that God can't do and won't do what he said he would. Or that he can't give you those desires of your heart. You just can't. You have to say, okay, God, you know, if it takes, if I'm an old lady by the time my my man comes along, okay. Because you know what? It's going to be better then, and God always knows something that you don't. You know, I wanted a husband when I was 20, 21. Shh, I could not have handled that. You know, and probably even, I think about my life right now. I'm, I'm so busy all the time, and do I even have time? You know, could I even? But God knows. God knows where you're at, and he knows what you desire, and he knows what you want. But he also knows you better, and he knows timing. He knows his timing a lot better than you do, and then better than you even think you do. So... That's what I have for you tonight. I hope you got something out of it. I know, we, I know we've heard a lot about Abraham our, since we've been young, but I just love the fact, oh, I didn't even, I thought about something before, before I end this. Um, in the, I think it's the English Standard Version, back in Genesis 16, whenever they took matters into their own hands and Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham, in the English Standard Version, it says that Abraham listened to Sarah. And it goes with that point listening. He listened to Sarah in between knowing what God, he didn't ever stop believing, but Sarah got in there and got into his ear and said, hey, I I can't have children. You might as well have Hagar. But it specifically said that he listened to Sarah. And I just really liked that. Well, stand up. I'm going to pray for you before you go. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We're so thankful that we have a God who loves us, a God that has promised us many things, long life, promised us those desires of our heart that we long for, our prayers, the things that we're believing you for. We know that if we hold fast to our faith, that you will come through with those promises. We keep our eyes fixed on you, Lord. I pray for everybody in this room tonight that they don't Forget, Lord, that you will do what you said you're going to do, and you will honor the faith that we have, just like Abraham. And that you'll look at us and that you'll say, well done, that's the kind of faith that I want to see. We just thank you for your word, for the instruction manual that we have, that you've given us all that we need, and that you are all that we need. You're our provider You're our security, you're our joy, you're our peace, you're our hope, and we don't have to look anywhere else for that. 
And we just worship you tonight and thank you for your so good in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Come back on Sunday, Pastor Bracken and Miss Donna. Oh, I didn't even tell you where they were. They are in California. They went to uh, Pastor Nancy Dufresne's conference. My mom was wanting to go to that. She asked everyone and their grandma if they could go with her, and nobody could go with her. So my dad decided a week before to surprise her. We booked their flights, and he told her a few days before they left. So they are loving it. I talked to him before I came up here tonight. So they love you. They send their love. They'll be back this week, so they'll be back for Sunday. Oh, and Super Sunday is this Sunday, so wear your jerseys. Come for an exciting time. We have a lot of fun. We're giving away a 50-inch TV. We'll have some really fun things. So be blessed as you go. Have a great night.